Hi, CST227. Um, this is my Milestone 5 application. Um, <clears throat> this is what the Minesweeper game looks like when it is transferred from being a console application that takes in keyboard keyboard inputs for rows and columns and this time it uses buttons um, rather cells that extend the button class and have the additional functionality of the old cells so here I'll take you in here uh, this is my cell class um, as you can see here the default variables are the same as the one from the cell class from the previous milestones um, and here we are setting the size of the buttons so that they're square. Um, since we're not setting them up in the designer, uh, we're setting them up using code. Uh, you have to set the size, otherwise they're the default size, which is a rectangular size. And then here are my getters and setters. All of these were taken from the old cell class, and the only extra bit in here is the uh, size um, and the fact that it extends the button. The next thing is another uh, rather simple thing. Um, this is the difficulty pop-up. It shows the user when they first start the application. Um, it asks them what size they want the board to be. So the easy, as you can see down here, um, when they click, um, it will give them radio button options. And when they click OK, depending on which one was checked, the difficulty will be set to a 10 by 10 grid, a 15 by 15 grid or a 20 by 20 grid and this um, excuse me this form is opened from the form 1 which we'll now look at um, the form 1 the first thing it does is show the dialog from the difficulty form that I built and as you can see here the um, the instance variables that I use throughout the class so this creates a pop-up dialog, and then this also creates the buttons um, and the cell array, and it passes in the difficulty. Um, that's why I set the difficulty to be the number, um, the size, either row or column, because I just pass in the difficulty uh, integer from the difficulty pop-up into both the first dimension and the second dimension of the array and then here is kind of an interesting thing right here so the the forms default to a certain size no matter um, <clears throat> no matter how many buttons or objects you have on them they'll just give you a scrolling option so whatever you set the size to be in the designer that's what size the form will always start out as but here I go this si dot size and I'm setting the size um, just based off of how many buttons and how big of a grid they decided to uh, or, or how what the difficulty level is it sets based off of the difficulty level and then here uh, you create the buttons activate the board and find the neighbors uh, those are the functions you have to call right off the bat in order to initialize your minesweeper game um, and then here's the create buttons these were the logic from this was pulled straight from the console application. None of it was really any different, um, especially considering that even the class name was the same. The class name was cell in that, uh, which was nice. I was able to reuse that code. Um, and then <clears throat> find neighbors. Um, that was also rather similar. Uh, the only method that I left out of this that was in the old one was the reveal grid method. Uh, I started coding it using that and quickly realized that it wasn't going to work because of the way this is set up as a graphical user interface rather than as a console application because before I was clearing the console and reprinting everything every time and this time I'm actually working with dynamic um, classes that can be changed without having to clear everything and re print everything so that's kind of nice the reveal grid method is gone now the reveal neighbors the recursive function came in handy on this one as well um, I was able to make some pretty big changes to it um, being that now I'm working with buttons and every time somebody clicks it has to call this recursive function 
So here's my here's my losing case down here, um, and then here's my winning case right here. When I went to chicken dinner, and it displays the time, um, and this this counts every time they click to reveal a tile. It counts that, and then this C right here that is the number of live tiles that was stored in the array when I I'm, whenever I created a live tile, I stored it in an array and I increased a counter. So that's what that's from. Um, and then it says if, if those, if the number of revealed plus the number of live is equal to the size times the size, then the game's over. That was an easy way to uh, check the logic rather than having to loop through everything to see if... Um, to check if each tile was live. So here is my mouse click, um, uh, my on click activator for when they click the mouse, uh, mouse button. This was by far the hardest part of this project, figuring out how to pass in the right click, how to create a mouse, an on click but, um, function. Initially, I started out with the on click function inside of the cell class, which is how I had it in last week's lesson and <clears throat> I was I had to move it into this one so that it could have access to um, the actual grid because if you do it within the button class it does not have access to the grid so I had to move it into here and I had to figure out how to do that and to still keep the logic <clears throat> excuse me uh, within the cells and then here's my timer for the clock so now that I've explained the code to you, let's jump into the game and let's see how it's played. All right, so first off, I'll just show you all the different grid sizes. That's the easy, the medium, and as you can see, it builds the size based on how um, based on how big you want the game to be, how hard you want it to be. So the the form actually resizes to make all the cells fit on the screen. All right, so I'm just going to play an easy game. Um, let's hope we don't hit a bomb right off the bat. If we do, I guess you'll see the losing case. Oh, there we go. We hit a bomb. All right, so it, if you hit a bomb, it shows all the bombs as per the requirements. It shows all the bombs on the screen. All right, let's see if we can win one. So uh, you can see the win case. All right, so that's going to be a flag. Obviously, um, that's going to have to be a flag, which means that that one's not going to be a flag, which means that this one is, ooh, let me see, here. yeah, that one is because it's touching the two there. This one's touching three, so that's not going to be, that's not going to be, that's not, that's not, all right, that's not, oh, nice, got a lot of zeros there. Okay, so that has to be, which means that's not, which also means that's not also means that's not, so if that's touching one, ooh, okay, so that has to be one, um, so that's touching one, so this, ooh, okay, a bit of a pickle here, it could either be, it could be either of these ones right here, um, because that one's touching one, all right, I'm going to move on to some other. Okay, so that has to be one, um, which means that's not one. Okay, so these two have to be them because that's a two and that has to touch, which means that, ooh, okay, we're in another little pickle here. All right, 85 seconds, not bad. Okay, this one I believe has to be one, yeah. That has to be one, which means that's not, okay. Ooh, man, this is not fun. This game is showing me no mercy. That's not one, okay, this one's, ooh, this one has to touch four. And now I'm in a tough spot. Now I'm in a really tough spot. Ooh, that was lucky. That was real lucky. All right, so that one has to be one, yep. All right, so now we're down to two more cells. Ooh, is this gonna be a guessing game? Oh 
might just be a guessing game. Oh, no, because this one has to touch three. It's only touching two. Okay. So I think if I click this one, it'll be a win. Boom. There we go. Pull that into the recording screen. Winner, winner, chicken dinner time is 151. All right. So that is my, um, that's my application. And thank you for watching.